Nanabuju Slays Hewer of His Shins by Marie Syrette. Read by Frank Blissett. Thereupon the old woman was very happy to see her grandson once more, and not at all did she realize that she had been made younger. So then she said to her grandson, All the time some creatures came to me here. They told me that you were slain. Again by some would I be told, Oh, my grandmother, I have come home. With some design they came speaking thus to me, she said to her grandson. Thereupon Nanabuju was angry, and he said to his grandmother, Again shall I leave you. Not yet have I found the probable ones that must have slain all my relatives. Alas, my grandson, she said to him, you are to be pitied. You may not be able to go there where abides the one who made you an orphan, she said to him. And where is it? At yonder place, in the center of the great sea, is an island, and never has any one gone there, and he goes for good, whoever goes there. I don't know whether they have ever arrived at the place, or if they died on the way. He was thus told by his grandmother, And over there is a manitou. He is called Hughes upon his shin, for it is said of him that ever is he hewing upon his shin. It is said of him that if any one should go thither, then at halfway to the place would one hear the sound he makes upon his shin. She said to him, Really? was she told by her grandson. Thereupon, in truth, did Nanabuju make up his mind. He thought that he would go, and so he said to his grandmother, Determined am I to go look for him, he said to her. Thereupon Nanabuju again made ready by making spear-pointed arrows. Enough to last him three days was the number he made. And so, after he had finished them, then again Nanabuju put his canoe in order. And then away went Nanabuju straight towards where it had been pointed out to him by his grandmother. Now, by and by, they say, as Nanabuju went paddling along in his canoe, Presently something he truly heard straight on the way whither he was going. He let his canoe go floating quietly along upon the water while he listened to the sound. Presently he clearly heard a sound. Ton, ton. Such was the sound he heard. Thereupon he thought, Hark, that is what my grandmother told me, he thought. And so truly he hurried on. Nenabuju later on again listened for the sound. Presently again he heard it. Tuan, 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 was what he heard. Nearer it now sounded. Again he hastened on. Another time, as he was looking about, he saw something in the way ahead of him. It was an object like a line drawn across his course. And then, as he looked, perhaps that which is now coming into view is the island for which I am bound, he thought. Thereupon he truly hastened on with his canoe. Farther on he listened again for the sound, 
and he heard it the same as before. Twin, twin, was the sound he heard. Straight from yonder place where the land was coming into view, he heard the sound. It turned out truly to be the island that he had seen. And now, as he continued on, he presently saw the land in plain sight. Thereupon again he listened, and then again he heard the sound. Twin! Twin! was what he heard. And then the water trembled, so loud was the manitou hewing upon his shin. Thereupon it is said that Nanabuju now drove his canoe straight for the place in the shore from whence he heard the sound come. Truly as he went ashore he saw a path leading away somewhere, and as he followed it up from the shore he saw a small wigwam standing, and so secretly went he up to it. As he peeped in, he saw an old man seated in a squatting pose, facing him, and he had hold of something in his hand. As he watched him striking upon his shin, it was like hewing upon a log, such was his manner of doing it, and frightful was the sound that he made when he struck, and as for Nanabuju, there he stood observing him. After a while the other then turned about and said, Aha! 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 Nanabuju, have you come to make war upon me? He was told. Yes, to him said Nanabuju. Very well, then. At the same time he made a pretense at laughing. So deep was his contempt of Nanabuju. He had no doubt but that he would prevail over him. And as for Nanabuju, too, come, make haste. And so, in truth, up he slowly rose from his couch, and up he rose to his feet, and then he came out of doors. Well, let us pick out a place where we are to fight each other, Nanabuju was told. All right, he said to him. Thereupon they truly sought for a place. Here is a place, they said. Round about looked Hewer of his shin, and up into the air looked Nanabuju. He stood in his place, his shield he carried, so too his bow and arrows. And as for Hewer of his shin, he held in his hand a war-club of stone. Thereupon they now addressed each other, saying, Ready! And truly Nanabuju then shot at him, and then in turn Hewer of his shin struck him with his war-club. Thereupon, exceedingly hard at work, they truly kept each other. Nanabuju nearly all the while was occupied in dodging the blows. Truly was he kept stirring by the other. And as for Nanabuju, he too was active with his shooting. While they now were in the thick of their fight with each other, then the supply of Nanabuju's pointed arrows began to run low. And in the midst of the fighting, Nanabuju heard the sound of someone calling out to him from above, saying, Hey, Nanabuju, at the scalp lock shoot him, was the sound Nanabuju heard. Though busily engaged, out he also cried. What? said Nanabuju. At his scalp lock shoot him whereupon he was told by Hewer of his shin, 
What is the matter, Nana Boujou? With whom are you speaking? He was asked. Nana Boujou then said, Ah, few do you think are my little brothers of the sky who protect me? He said to him. Thereupon, truly Nana Boujou shot the hewer of his shin, there where he was told to shoot him, there where his hair was tied in a bunch at the back, whereupon he hit him with the arrow. And then he was told, Alas, O oh Nana Boujou, is it true that now you really intend to kill me? He was told, Ah! he said to him, You surely do not think that I am simply trifling with you? To him said Nana Boujou. Once more he shot him in the crown of the head, whereupon again the same thing he was told. Alas, O oh Nana Boujou, is it true that surely now you mean to slay me? He said to him, of course, said Nana Boujou, you who slew my parents, he said to him, you too shall I slay, he said to him. At the same time that Nana Boujou was talking, he was all the while shooting, and then presently he brought him down with his shooting. Thereupon he was told again, now, O oh Nana Boujou, do leave me alone. In return, something will I give you. Hurry and give it to me, he said to him. Tell me, too, what you did to my father and mother and to all of those who used to live in times past, he said to him. Whereupon, truly he was told, do you see this island where now we have fought each other? Those trees that you see standing are the same as they who used to live in times gone by. Such is the form I have made them, that they be as trees. He was told, Now, if you leave me alone, I will give you something to use to make them come back to life again. He was told, Make haste and tell me what I shall do to bring them back to life. Go yonder, inside, to the place from whence I rose to my feet, and you will see there a small wooden pail, and bring it here to me. Thereupon Nanu Buju truly went to fetch it, but he did not lay aside his bow and arrows. And then he was told, You see what is here contained in this small pail, in this small wooden pail. There is contained here the means by which you are to bring back to life your father and your mother. He said to him, And all the others. Now this you shall do. You shall scratch the bark from the tree until you see the part in wood, and then a stick shall you dip into this that is contained here in the little wooden pail, and then shall you rub it upon the place where you have scraped the bark from the tree. He said to him, Oh, is that all? He said to him, That is all. Thereupon again he shot him in the crown of the head, whereupon he slew him. There now, he said to him, dog that you are, who was ever bent upon destroying the earth, so now I will derive from you the source by which the earth will be replenished, he said to him. Thereupon he began slicing him into small pieces with a knife, and as he scattered the pieces about, in all of the various directions he flung them. Then he named them what they were to be, they that run about upon the earth as the little animal folk, 
and they that fly about in the air, and also the large animal folk. And then next, after Nanabuju had taken up the little pail, he did what he had been commanded. As soon as he had done it to one tree, straightway there stood in the place a man, and so to another he did it. Again to many he did it, and then by and by he found his father and his mother, and his elder brother Nana Padam. And then Nana Buju was told by his elder brother, for immediately was he here teased by him while the people laughed, Did you hear me when I spoke to you? Whereupon Nana Buju said to him, Where? he said to him, When the old man was about to prevail over you. And so it was by him that Nanubuju was called upon while he and Hewer of his shin were fighting. And now Nanubuju was yet very busy bringing the trees back to life. Truly it was they that used to live in a former time. To its full capacity was the island crowded. That was Nanabuju Slay's Hewer of His Shin by Marie Syrette. Read by Frank Blissett.